Hello, today I want to talk about a book that has been my favorite read of the year so far. If you haven't spotted it yet, this is it. This is The Soul Path by Raynor Wynn. It was published by Penguin in 2019, so this edition is quite new. If I had to like describe this book in just a couple of words, I would say it's unconventional, it's daring, and it's inspirational. A little bit of background on this, uh, this is a non-fiction, so it is based on, on a true story, and she's basically describing one of the worst periods of her life, and I'm just gonna read the description on the back. It says, just days after Rainer Wynne learned that Moth, her husband of 32 years, was terminally ill, they lost their home and livelihood. With nothing left in little time, they impossibly decided to walk that 630 miles southwest coast path from Somerset to Dorset via Devon and Cornwall. Living wild and free, at the mercy of sea and sky, they discovered a new liberating existence. But what would they find at the journey's end? This is a travel writing book, and it's all about this journey that this couple is embarking on after two terrible news actually struck them. It's about a couple. It's not a love story though, even though there's a lot of passages that deals with the idea of love and the idea of loss of love. Passages such as, we clung together as if the simple act of pressing our bodies together would make this stop. If you've ever had to experience something similar, to see someone that you love unwell, not being able to, to do anything about it, it's something that really can make you feel powerless. When do you accept that someone you love is ill? When a doctor tells you? Or when you see it with your own eyes? And if you finally do accept it, what do you do then? This book is about a lot of intense feelings of loss. Having lost your identity, having lost your place where you belong is quite short but it touches upon a lot of different themes and aspects of life and the fragility of life. The overarching theme is that of the journey. Here they are talking to each other and they say, do we have a plan? Of course we do. We walk until we stop walking and maybe on the way we found some kind of future. This theme of having a sense of Going forward, I think it's something also that's helping them sort of cope with this two big setbacks that really push them back and into a place where they didn't feel safe anymore. This is a book that is written in the first person from her point of view. She not only experiences the loss of her home, she also discovers that her other safe place, her husband, has been diagnosed with a terminally ill condition. But at the same time, on the, on the other side, there's also a lot of strength and resilience that this book evokes. I think this is a, a unique story, quite unconventional. There are a middle-aged couple walking this path where a lot of young people are backpacking. I think it's unconventional in the sense that after they learn about this terrible news they decide to, to walk the path and not choose like the safe options of waiting for, for a council house. We could have stopped but we had nothing to lose and everything to walk for. We were free here, battered by the elements, hungry, tired, cold, free. Free to walk or not, to stop or not. Here, we were still in control of our life, of our own outcomes, our destiny. We chose to walk and seize the freedom that came with that choice. But at the same time, it's also, I think, a universal story that uh, draws upon those human basic emotions and needs. The need to feel at home, the need to, to feel safe, the need to be loved and also having a sense of purpose, a sense of identity. It's a journey of redemption and discovery of your inner self and allows them 
to shift their perspective and shift their relationship with the world by reconnecting with nature and finding a different pace in life, a different way to approach things. Now our land was gone. I'd fear I would lose it. That tie to reality, sitting in the grass, wet air rushing past, roaring overhead, the dangerous self-willed, uncontrolled, wild strength of the wind filled me up. Caught by the storm, held up, bonds rebound, released, regained. I could never lose it. I was as much the storm as I was the dry dust and the high-pitched call of the oyster catchers. All the material things were slipping away, but in their wake, a core of strength was beginning to reform. It's been quite an inspirational read, and it has reminded me of Wild by Cheryl Strait, which I read a couple of years back when I attended a class at university about travel writing, and I um, mean, there's, there's, there's a nice balance between the travel writing and the personal reflections. Uh, also, how the author tries to like relate her own feelings to the nature or tries to learn something from the nature. And it's narrated with such a great honesty, both with a down-to-earth style, but also at times it gets some sort of like lyrical when it describes the, the landscape or philosophical when she reflects on their journey so far. Only one thing was real. If I put one foot in front of another, the path would move me forward and a strip of dirt, often no more than a foot wide, had become home. I was no longer striving, fighting to change the unchangeable, not clenching in anxiety at the life we'd been unable to hold on to. A new season had crept into me, a softer season of acceptance. So it's been quite motivational, I'd say, because if this couple was able to like face all this tough experiences and they were able to walk all those miles, over 600 miles, under the rain, the hot sun and the wind. I mean, we as humans are resilient and I'm always amazed by our ability to overcome everything that life throws at us. So I would definitely recommend this book to anyone who's been feeling as if they cannot keep up with all the challenges that they have in life and this book will definitely make you feel that you're not alone in this. The conclusion is quite open-ended but I think it's quite fitting to this. Like it's linked to the idea that we have to come to term as humans with the uncertainty of life. What would it be? Who would it be? I didn't know but it was all right not to. Past was another headland and I was happy to leave it there. I could at last look to the future with hope.